El Nino is coming, and it looks like it will soon shake up the world's climate. Oh oh. In this video you can find out exactly what we have to prepare for and whether we might be able to protect ourselves. And if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thanks a lot guys and welcome. <laughs>I don't know how good you guys are with languages. My Spanish is abysmal, even though I was in an advanced Spanish class in school. Good thing we will get by with two Spanish vocabulary words today, El Nino and La Nina. These are two climate phenomena that occur in the Pacific Ocean and can impact weather worldwide. During normal conditions, trade winds blow westward along the equator, taking warm water from South America toward Asia. The warm water rises from the depths and replaces the cold water at the surface. This results in a nice ocean current and a system that works in itself. So everything is great or, no, because El Nino is throwing a wrench in the works. Burritos, guacamole, spaghetti. Rondo para rico suave. Ah, taco supreme. This cycle can be disturbed and that is called El Nino. El Nino occurs when the trade winds weaken, which causes the warm water to be pushed back to the west coast of America. The entire system of ocean currents, which is largely driven by the trade winds, then no longer functions. Now, of course, you might think, then there's just a little bit more warm water on the coast of South America, it's good for swimming, isn't it? However, this has serious global implications. Warm surface temperatures affect global weather and can cause droughts, floods and tropical storms. We'll take a closer look at what havoc El Nino will wreak in a moment. As in the wild fantasies of some politicians, there is also a quota for women in weather. And therefore the counterpart to El Nino is La Nina. You guessed it, La Nina occurs when trade winds are stronger than usual, driving more warm water to Asia while the cold water stays on the surface. This can have equally massive effects on global weather. El Nino and La Nina usually occur cyclically, every few years, and can last several months to a year. But I hear some of you asking, startled, Why is this Don Ninja thing affecting the whole world? Global weather is an incredibly complex system. Each small mechanism affects another, and events at one end of the world can lead to temperature fluctuations at the other. Global weather and climate function like perfect clockwork. And when a cog in such clockwork suddenly starts turning in the other direction, it's usually a little, suboptimal. El Nino is one such cog in the global clockwork. A local event in the central and eastern Pacific that affects the ocean-atmosphere interaction. By warming Pacific waters and altering currents, El Nino upsets the entire clockwork. For example, El Nino can change the position of the jet stream. The jet stream is a high-speed, high-altitude wind current driven by temperature differences between the equator and the poles that affects the position, and strength of high and low pressure areas. This, in turn, has a massive impact on the weather. When El Nino alters the position of the jet stream, it can lead to changes in precipitation and temperature patterns and even promote hurricanes in the Pacific Ocean, which in turn can affect weather in other parts of the world. There may even be massive forest die-offs due to temperature and moisture changes. Whatever happens, the effects of El Nino remind me a bit of the butterfly effect, which says that it is unpredictable what gigantic effects on an overall system an even tiny change can have. For example, a bag of rice just fell over in China, and through a complicated quantum concatenation of micro-events, this has resulted in me now biting into this muffin. Yummy butterfly effect. And all of what I just said applies to La Nina, of course. So changes in wind and ocean currents in the Pacific lead to storms, dangerous weather phenomena, temperature fluctuations, and, of course, massive economic damage as a result. But what exactly does this cycle look like? And can we adapt to it? Why will El Nino really catch us off guard as early as next year? I'll explain it to you directly. But before that, a note that you can help me a lot with a thumbs up for the video. Who knows what kind of butterfly effect it will trigger if you press thumbs up now. Huh? Of course. 
the entire cycle has the easy-to-remember name El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle. ENSO for short, and it consists of the three phases we already know. In the El Nino phase, the trade winds weaken and warm water is pushed from the western to the eastern Pacific. This causes ocean temperatures in the eastern Pacific to rise, which has implications for global climate. This phase typically lasts 9 to 12 months. Then, of course, we have the normal phase, where temperatures in the Pacific are just normal and the trade winds blow westward. This phase usually lasts for several years and then comes the La Nina phase, sort of the anti-El Nino. The trade winds become stronger and cold water from the western Pacific enters Asia to the east. This causes sea temperatures in the eastern Pacific to drop, which also has an impact on global climate. This phase also lasts 9 to 12 months. Actually, it's like life. You constantly swing between absurd emotional extremes, and if you're lucky, it settles in the middle for a moment. Well, I should really become a psychotherapist. And this ENSO cycle can last up to seven years in total. Now, of course, you could say. Oh, I'm not worried about that. In seven years, an all-powerful AI will have destroyed humanity anyway. Well, weather models show that El Nino will occur again this fall with a probability of up to 90% and the consequences will then be clearly felt from 2024 onwards. Hans-Joachim Schellnhuber, new Director General of the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis, said, The last three years have been characterized by La Ninas. These La Ninas have lowered global temperatures by about 0.1 degrees Celsius. If El Nino comes to fruition again this year, we can expect a significant jump in global temperatures. And indeed, there is already talk that this could make 2024 the hottest year on record for temperatures. Such predictions should always be taken with a grain of salt, of course, but it's still fascinating to see that by modeling the global wind and flow systems, we can anticipate something like this, and perhaps even prepare ourselves as a result. Of course, we cannot stop these phenomena because they are natural and important components of the global wind and current system. Many ocean creatures have even completely adapted their behavior to these El Nino and La Nina phases. But, we can take precautions by introducing efficient water management systems in the regions that will then be affected by severe drought, and in agriculture, we can promote the cultivation of drought-resistant crops. Or we could build safe infrastructure in the regions that are first vulnerable to hurricanes due to El Nino. Whether that is then done is, of course, a different story. Subscriber numbers are not a different story. We are facing the weather phenomenon that many of you viewers have not yet subscribed to. If you haven't subscribed yet, or know space-loving friends and family, I'd be galactically happy if you'd help me make the channel even bigger. Thanks guys! And if you want to know what to expect in the next video, be sure to check it out next time too, I promise it will blow your mind once again. Also, you can support my channel by visiting the online store, every purchase helps. Otherwise, I would say, see you in the next video. Take care guys.